Um, you know that last song, uh, holy cow. Leaves the 99 and goes after the one. I, and maybe you, are the one. And once he finds us, he doesn't just bring us back into the fold and say, okay, everything's fine now. No, he shows us where we screwed up. And he teaches us how to fix it. You know, the triune God is funny. I was praying one day for the Holy Spirit to show people exactly what he could do and would do if they would let him. He said to, and he said to me, I have a question for you. Get some paper and a pen. <laughs> my, my dumb butt said, what was, what's the question? His answer was, what did I tell you? <laughs> well, <laughs> been around long enough to know when that comes out of the mouth, you, you shut up. Um, those of you who've been here for a while know I've never it, written anything down. But obvious today, I do. As I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me, I would write. And when I began to assume I knew where he was going, which I sometimes do, the spirit would lift and go away. Later, he would come and impress on me to write some more. And at the very end of this day, he did let me express my opinion. Uh, my daddy, who was a licensed bass, Pab, blah, blah, blah. Sorry, that, that's almost a cuss word for me anymore. But my daddy, who was a licensed Baptist preacher, always told me to speak what God was dealing with you about. You're not unique, he said. If God's dealing with you about something, someone who hears you is dealing with it at the same time. So, if you find yourself wanting to tune me out, or if what I'm saying starts to stir up negative emotions, or even questions, then just maybe you're the one Jesus is dealing with. So, <laughs> this is not a feel-good, ha-ha kind of thing. Right? It's, not a, it's not a victory won. It's a struggle going through. I've never shared one like that, ever. Mine's always happy and go lucky, and I get you to laugh. I don't think today that's going to happen. Here's the question the Holy Spirit asked me. He says, what or who do I trust and believe? Well, for this Christian, the answer is God, or so I say. What, what does my speech and my actions really reveal about my claim? You see, those two things tell the world how much I truly trust and believe Jesus. Most believers say, I, I believe in Jesus. I trust in Jesus. And while these sayings sound good, they are nowhere near what Jesus wants. The questions should be, do I trust him? Do I believe him? You see, belief in is not believing Satan believes in Jesus, but he doesn't believe him. That two-letter word, in, makes those two statements, belief in and believe, worlds apart. They are not, absolutely not the same. You see, I believe in a chair's ability to hold me when I sit in it. But unless I sit in it, 
the belief in doesn't give me rest or support. When I sit, belief in becomes belief because I've given the chair the opportunity to prove it will do what it says it will do. Jesus wants the same belief and trust as I give that chair. You see, if I can believe and trust that a stupid, inanimate chair will do what it promises, why won't I trust my Savior, my Lord? my God, my king, my brother, and my friend to do what he says. The Bible from Genesis to Revelation is chock full of the promises of the creator God. <laughs> Belief in those promises does not bring them to fruition in my life. I have to believe that the God who made the promises will keep them. See, I think it's ironic that people don't question their doctors, their attorneys, or their accountants. But those same people question God every stinking step of the way. Jesus longs. He desires for his followers to give him the same chance to prove he will do what he says he'll do, just like I gave that stupid chair. And for some reason, for some reason, I believe he will, up to a point. If I pray for Jesus to use me to help push his kingdom forward, and an opportunity comes up for me to serve on a committee or, or be a toilet cleaner, but I pass up, pass up that opportunity because either I think I have nothing to bring to the table or I'm above the task. I've completely missed what God wanted me to do. He cannot show me him keeping his promises because I didn't listen to him. I didn't listen to him speak to me. I didn't hear him speak. Spoiler alert. He speaks through people. He speaks through his word. Only rarely does he speak audibly. So, if I'm waiting for Jesus to come up, tap me on the shoulder, and say, I want you to do blah, blah, blah. I'm going to stay stuck exactly where I am. It's possible that at the end of the, it's every once in a while, at the end of the month, I have a chunk of money left. Not often, but every once in a while. Question is, do I ask Jesus, what would you want me to do with this? Or is my response to put it in savings and sit on it? You see, my response tells me, and it tells Jesus exactly, down to the point, how much I trust him, how much I believe him. See, it shows me that I just trust in him. The only way for me to learn to trust him is to test the waters at first. You know, a little bit here, a little bit there. Jesus, you said you do this if I do this. So you do the if and he does the then. And as you go, you get to trust him more. If I have a hundred bucks and I feel I'm supposed to give it to a person or family or ministry and don't, not only is that sin, <laughs> it's in the book. Actually, it's in the book we're studying. It is a blaring neon sign that says, I truly only trust in Jesus. I only believe in him. See, it comes down to this. I must take a hard upsetting, convicting, honest look 
at the deepest, darkest recesses of my being, asking the Holy Spirit to shine the light of his of God's grace on the rancid meat of my past experience and the fear it has cultivated in my life. In Celebrate Recovery, we say taking a fourth step. Lovely step. Sucks, but necessary. You see, fear can mean, to me, one of two things. It means forget everything and run, or face everything and recover. I must remember, when I face him after this life is over, he's going to ask me, what did I do with what, I get, what he gave me? He's not going to ask me how much I had in the bank. In case you're wondering why I didn't use scripture in this, actually I did all the way through. And you see, I had to find and dig out these nuggets for myself. And I am not giving away this gold mine. You want to know where I found them? Get your own pick and shovel and find your own gold. If in, if in your prospecting, you can prove through scripture that what I'm saying here is wrong, go ahead and tell me. And I will happily stand back up here and admit it to everyone. Happy prospecting. God bless you. I love you. Thank you for letting me share.